Hello friends and welcome to Digimento. Today we will be discussing about sovereign gold bond scheme which is an important current affair as well as this is an important topic which could be asked in your examinations as well. So the government is giving more and more importance to this bond scheme especially during this time because the prices of gold has shoot up during the lockdown season. So for that reason the sovereign gold bond scheme has become even more important. So we will be discussing everything about the sovereign gold bond scheme in detail in a short time in this video please do watch this video till the end and also if you like this video or if you find that it has helped you to some extent please do not forget to like this video and share it with your friends also so let's begin and before that if you have not yet subscribed to our channel please do subscribe and also please press the bell icon for receiving further notifications of the videos that we upload on our channel if you are preparing for GATE, NTA, UGC NET or PGT Computer Science, we are providing online classes and the details of which you can get from our website www.digimento.com or you can call to this number. We will provide you all the details about the online classes that we provide. So I think we will directly now move on to the subject that is a sovereign gold bond scheme. So the current affair here is that the government of India, which is a central government in consultation with RBI. Now the government of India here refers to the government that is a central government, the federal government. Now RBI is the central bank of Indian economy is the monetary authority of our economy. So government in consultation with RBI has decided to issue sovereign gold bonds. We will see what is a sovereign gold bond. So this is the current affair and it will be installed in six installments or it will be issued in six installments. So from April 2020 to September 2020. So this is the uh, decision taken. Now we know it's already September. Now we will see what is that. Now, sovereign gold bond 2020-21 scheme. It comes at a time when the rapid spread of deadly coronavirus has disturbed the financial markets around the globe. So, the government had decided earlier to issue sovereign gold bonds in six installments from April to September. Now, if you look into this time period, this is when the COVID-19 pandemic had hit India. And uh, from the last week of March onwards, the country had undergone a national lockdown. So from April to September, that is the period which was fixed for issuing these bonds had seen unforeseen situations in the Indian economy in the form of COVID-19 and the subsequent lockdown which was announced due to the COVID-19 and it was not just the case with India. Being a global pandemic, the COVID-19 has hit the markets around the globe uh, more or less in the same way. Now let's understand what is sovereign gold bonds and what was the idea behind issuing this kind of bonds. So sovereign gold bonds this was launched in 2015 November. So in 2015 the idea of sovereign gold bonds was implemented and the sovereign gold bonds is issued by the RBI on behalf of the central government. So central government does not issue directly but the RBI, which is a central bank of our economy, on behalf of the central government issues the sovereign gold bond. So it is issued by RBI on behalf of the central government. Now the government securities, the G6 denominated in grams of gold, which are substitute for holding physical gold. And this is called the sovereign gold bond. Now, uh, before uh, we understand what is a sovereign gold bond, I think I should tell you a little bit about what is a bond. So bond is basically a debt instrument. So a debt instrument, bond is a debt instrument. And uh, in case of a debt instrument, the investor will be paid interest. Now for the investor, it is a form of investment. And for the issuer of the bond, this is a form uh, or this is a way by which the issuer can raise capital. So that is a bond. Now basic things about bond. One, it is a debt instrument. Second one, return has to be paid in the form of interest uh, or uh, in the form of some kind of uh, bonus to the investor. And for the investor, this is an investment. And for the issuer, it is a way of raising capital. <laughs> now, sovereign gold bonds, they are government securities, which means they are issued by the government actually it is issued by RBI on behalf of the government which means RBI is here representing the government so these are government securities 
denominated in grams of gold so otherwise what happens when when we talk about bonds it is in terms of rupees or it is in terms of currency whereas this is denominated in grams of gold that means you can buy uh, one gram of uh, gold valued bond so the value of the bond will be one gram of gold so here the value of the bond it is uh, related to or it is demarcated as the value of uh, gold grams in grams of gold and this uh, is a substitute for holding physical gold now i'll tell you two three things related to this now when we look into indian market the prices of uh, price of gold is increasing what is the reason it is because the demand for gold is increasing and also gold is seen as a safe investment by the investors so apart from uh, gold being used as a, a part of culture or used as jewelry and all it's also seen as a form of investments now the government wants to divert this investments in gold uh, as physical investments in gold towards financial investments now gold is a physical investment whereas bonds are financial investment so government wants to divert this investments in the form of physical gold towards the financial investments like the bonds and since being a government security the risk is very less okay any investor while making an investment decision looks into two factors one is risk and the other one is return so when we talk about government securities they have very low rate of risk now the objective of issuing the sovereign gold bond is to reduce the demand for physical gold and shift a part of the domestic savings into financial savings this is what we discussed so gold is a physical asset so government wants to divert this investments in the physical assets to financial assets which is a bond bond is also a part of the financial assets so this will reduce the demand for physical gold and therefore uh, by reducing the demand for physical gold the prices of gold will stabilize also the value of rupee will also stabilize so to reduce the demand for physical gold and to shift a part of the domestic savings into financial savings now <laughs> let's see how does the purchase and sale takes place investors have to pay the issue price in cash and the bonds will be redeemed in cash on maturity so uh, the value of the bonds is decided on the basis of uh, the price of the gold so investors uh, those who purchase this bonds have to pay the issue price in cash and the bonds will be redeemed in cash on maturity so both purchase and sale uh, sorry purchase and redemption takes place in the form of cash the government pay an interest at the rate of 2.5 percentage per annum and this is payable semi annually okay so government pays an interest at 2.5 percentage per annum and this will be paid semi annually that is in 6 months so interest rate is 2. Five percentage. Now the tenure is eight years, and the exit options are available from the fifth year. So the investment is for eight years. So these bonds have a maturity period of eight years, but the investor will have an exit option after the fifth year. So from the fifth year onwards, uh, the investor will have an option to exit from this bond. now eligibility the bonds will be restricted to sale only to resident individuals so not citizens you have to remember that and this is important only to resident individuals that means even if a citizen who is an nri non resident indian he or she will not be eligible to purchase these bonds so the bonds will be restricted for sale to resident individuals hindu undivided families trust universities and charitable institutions the minimum permissible investment unit is 1 gram so a person who is investing in gold uh, bonds that is sovereign gold bonds then the minimum investment is 1 gram of gold that is value uh, equal to 1 gram of gold and maximum limit is 4 kg of gold uh, or the value of 4 kg of gold for individuals now uh, how can you buy these bonds designated scheduled commercial banks Uh, except small finance banks and payment banks and a stock holding corporation of india limited and designated post offices so the sale of these bonds take place through designated scheduled commercial banks mostly it is the sbi so mostly it is the sbi then uh, through a 
स्टॉक होल्डिंग कॉर्पोरेशन और थ्रू डेसिग्नेटेड पोस्ट ऑफिस रिमेंबर दैट स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक एंड पेमेंट बैंक कैनॉट सेल द बॉन्ड्स वन कैन ऑल्सो बाई दीज बॉन्ड्स थ्रू नेशनल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज ऑफ इंडिया लिमिटेड दैट इज द एन एस सी एंड द बी एस सी दैट इज बॉम्बे स्टॉक एक्सचेंज सो द सेल इज डन ऑल्सो थ्रू बी एस सी एंड एन एस सी to stock exchanges so this is how the sale of the bonds are done and uh, you can buy the bonds from all these designated agencies now coming to the advantages <coughs> first one is it will help in portfolio diversification that is the diversification of investments from fin- physical assets to financial assets and uh, this also does not need physical storage of gold this is the most important one and since the value of this bonds are related to the price of gold then um, any person who wants to make an investment in the gold can make investment in sovereign gold bond with, without the need to physically store the gold it will help in uh, reduce india's over dependence on gold imports so as the demand of gold uh, jewelry or gold as a physical asset increases the import will also increase this will also have a negative consequences on the value of rupee then it is also a better way of investing in gold as along with capital appreciation an investor also gets fixed rate of interest that is 2.5 percentage so along with capital appreciation the person will also get a fixed rate of interest and this is tax efficient as no capital gains taxes will be charged in cases of redemption on maturity suppose a person who makes an investment suppose he makes a capital gain during the maturity this capital gain will not be uh, included in calculating the income tax so uh, the there is tax exemption as well so these are the advantages now disadvantage is that long term investment unlike physical gold uh, is one of the disadvantage which means that now this is long term we know the period of maturity is actually 8 years and there is an exit option only from the 5th year now if you are holding physical gold and tomorrow suppose you have a urgent uh, requirement for money what you can do you can directly go to a jeweler and you can sell your gold which means the physical gold is more liquid so liquidity of physical gold is high so liquidity is high in case of physical gold and also it is listed on exchange but the trading volumes are not high and therefore it will be difficult to exit before maturity so even though this is listed on stock exchanges the volume trading volume is not very high so it will be very difficult to exit before the maturity so these are the advantages and disadvantages i hope this video was helpful to you and if you like it please do share this video with your friends also and please do not forget to subscribe to our ch- to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet i'll meet you again with another topic please do take care thank you so much for watching